Good morning, this is Wayne Bilal with another Smart Profit Maximizing Moment. And this is Tessie, who's behaving because I gave her her treat, so I'll let her down. She is no longer a small puppy. Still a puppy, just barely over five months old. But she's gotten all legs. <laughs> Anyways, let me do a better job introducing myself. My name is Wayne Bilal. I'm the founder of a local CPA firm in El Paso, Texas, since 1991. So we had our 28th anniversary. Been doing it a lot longer than that. Passed the CPA exam in the late 70s. Almost all that time. God, that makes me tired just saying that. <laughs> Almost all that time working with small business owners. Our firm concentrates and focuses on three things. One, helping you make my, helping my clients and you make more money. All right. Part of it is these, these uh, profit moments, part of it's the blog, part of it's courses. I'm also the creator of the Smart Profit Maximizing System, which is a course we have and we're coming out with a book, which right now we're calling Hidden Profits, the 21 steps to increasing, finding the gold hiding in your business. Also tax planning, starting literally the week after, no, two weeks from now, we'll be full blown into tax planning season, which is very simply when we help our clients keep more of that money we help them make more of, <laughs> pretty simply. Uh, in the last three years alone, we've helped our clients save over $4.3 million. That's money they got to keep. They didn't send to the IRS. They could use for whatever they want. Of course, tax returns. We do between six and 700 tax returns, mainly business owners, rental property owners, and their business related businesses. Um, if you have not filed your 2018 tax return, you have till next Tuesday. Less than a week, procrastinators. <laughs> You're the people, if you haven't done it, that we really don't like. Today, the question we're going to answer is, how long should I keep my tax records? There you go, Tessie. All right. Let's first, the answer is really as long as you can be audited, okay? So your audit, audit proofing your return means having a proper documentation to prove a deduction if you're audited. I've written in the past and talked in the past about how to survive an IRS audit, but really it comes down to if you deduct something, if you don't, you know, pay, you're, you're required to pay tax on just about everything, unless the code specifically says you don't have to, such as life insurance or inheritance, okay? Things like, you know, there's specific things. But you can only deduct those things that are specifically listed in there and only if you have proper documentation. So that's not the subject of this one, but, you know, this video, but you need to have proper documentation. The subject of this video is how long do you keep that, all right? If you owe, if you owe additional taxes, situations two, three, and four do not apply, um, then three years is the standard, all right? To, in other words, I'm going to cover two, three, and four where you might be required to keep it longer than three years, but normally three years. I recommend seven is usually the safest way to go. If you do not report income that you should report and it's more than 25% of your gross income shown on your return, six years, all right? So for example, if they go back three years and audit you and they find something that's that you left off your return, they can go back three more years. If you file a fraudulent return, there's no limit. <laughs> if you just lie. Look, there's so many things you can legally do. Um, there's no reason to be fraudulent, okay? But a lot of people do. And, and what's worse, they think they're, they're cheating the government. A lot of times they're cheating themselves. For example, a cash restaurant. Um, I'm not gonna report the cash. Of course, they don't report the expenses either. A lot of times they have sloppy bookkeeping. When we actually redo their books, put all their income in, and take the proper deductions that are allowed, many, many times they owe less than they would, than they did when they were cheating, which was fraud. All right. If you don't file a return, there's no limit. Now, truthfully, they usually go back six years. That's normal. So if you haven't filed a return, get your returns filed, even if you're six years in the past. There's a, a five-year fine plus a hundred thousand dollars is what I remember for each year you haven't filed. Now, I've never seen it as long, I've never seen it, but it can be done, but it's never been done that I know of if you voluntarily file them yourself and, and you know, turn yourself in basically. If you file an amended return on a previous year, the later of three years or two years after the tax was paid is when you should keep it, all right? If you amend your return due to a bad de debt deduction or loss from a worthless investment security, seven years. If you have employees, your employment tax records should be kept for four years, all right? Um, look, folks, simple answer, I'd say seven, ten at the most. I've got people that have kept it since inception, so they have stuff going back to 1970s. I had one guy give me a tax return that I did for him in, like, 1981 or something like that. I was <laughs> amazed, actually. Um, the law was a lot simpler than to be frank about it. So let's just keep it simple. Seven years is what I would recommend. Hey, until next time, this is Wayne Blau saying let's make this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.